Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Kiki. I am the lead tutor here at Kiki Prep and today in my USMLE Step 1 tutorial video, I will be talking about inguinal hernias. To kick off this discussion, let's take a look at our inguinal canal. Alright, so in this picture you can see we've been shown the different layers of your anterior abdominal wall. Starting off with the outermost part, which is the aponeurosis of your external oblique muscle, right? Obviously, this is below the skin and the external fascia. So, after your aponeurosis of your external oblique muscle, the next thing you have right here is your internal oblique muscle, your transversus abdominis muscle, your transversalis fascia, your extraperitoneal tissue, and your parietal peritoneum. You can also see we've been shown the spermatic cord, and if you notice, you realize that the spermatic cord is also covered by different layers. Each of the layers of the spermatic cord was uh, derived from the different layers of our anterior abdominal wall. For example, if you look at your internal spermatic fascia, you can see that this came as a result of your transversalis fascia, right? Your cremasteric muscle and fascia came from your internal oblique. Your external spermatic fascia came from your um, external oblique. And the reason why this happens is because during the descent of your testes from your deep inguinal ring, to your superficial and ultimately down to your scrotum, it carried along with it the different layers of your abdominal wall as it traveled. Also, very importantly to take note of in this picture is the location of our inferior epigastric vessels. Now, these vessels, your inferior epigastric artery and your inferior epigastric vein, they're really, really, really important when it comes to inguinal hernias because they form a very major anatomic landmark that allows us to tell the difference between a direct and an indirect inguinal hernia. Let's go on and talk about these two. Now, in a direct inguinal hernia, what is happening is you have a protrusion of your abdominal cavity contents through your inguinal triangle, also called your Hasselbach's triangle. Now, your Hasselbach's triangle gives us something called your medial inguinal fossa, which is this region right here in between your inferior epigastric vessels and your medial umbilical ligament. So if you look at the picture, this area right here where I have the arrow, that's my medial inguinal fossa. This is the most common location of your direct inguinal hernia. So as you can see, your direct inguinal hernia is occurring medial to your inferior epigastric artery, but lateral to your medial umbilical ligament. Now also if you notice, you can see that our direct inguinal hernia being medial to our inferior epigastric artery is not very close to my deep inguinal ring. So therefore, my abdominal cavity contents do not fall into this ring they only protrude on that weak area of my Hasselbach's triangle. So as a result, only my superficial or my external inguinal ring is affected in my direct inguinal hernia. Let's take a look at the indirect inguinal hernia. Now, in the indirect inguinal hernia, what is happening is you have a protrusion of your abdominal cavity contents beginning from your internal or your deep ring, which is right here, right? It goes through your spermatic cord following the same direction with the descent of your testes, coming out of your superficial ring and ultimately ending up in your scrotum. So this follows the exact same path that the descent of your testes follows. Now also going back to inferior epigastric vessels, you can see that this happens lateral to our inferior epigastric vessels. So that's why it's in very close proximity to this deep inguinal ring and it can fall into that ring. Now, to compare our direct versus indirect inguinal hernia, as you can see in this picture, right here you have um you have your inguinal ligament, all right, and you can see your inferior epigastric vessels up there, all right. So you can see that your indirect is occurring lateral to your inferior epigastric vessels, and your direct is occurring medial to your inferior epigastric vessel right there in your Hasselbach's triangle. Good. So to remember this, I use something called your DMIL. Now you can come up with whatever mnemonic you like to help you remember these two different types of hernias. But DMIL just basically means that your direct inguinal hernia occurs medial to your inferior epigastric vessels and your indirect hernia occurs lateral to your inferior epigastric vessels. So over here you can see another picture um, of someone that has um, different hernias. Hopefully all this does happen at the same time in one person. But you can see right here we have a hernia that is protruding through the abdominal wall. Now you can see that this one doesn't go into the scrotum. So we can tell that that's going to be our Hasselbach's area. And that is going to be a direct inguinal hernia occurring medial to inferior epigastric vessel, right? At the bottom of the, um, the picture, you can see this other hernia right there is actually extending into the scrotum. So this tells us this is following the same descent 
um, the, the same um, pathway as the descent of your testes. So this has to be an indirect inguinal hernia that is lateral to your inferior epigastric vessels. Thank you for watching my video. Um, please make sure you thumbs up if you like the video. If you have any questions or any comments on this topic, please leave a message on below the video or you could email me at info at kikiprep.com or on my Facebook page. The link is in the um, description. You can leave a comment there and also if there's any specific topic you would like me to make a video of, please feel free to also put it in your message. Thank you for watching and bye.